Hi, I'm Pastor Steve Pote Marshall, and welcoming you to worship here for the Tascadero United Methodist Church. We're so glad that you're with us today, and we hope that you'll register online. Just go to our worship hub, and you can get our announcements and all that uh, information that you might need. For now, though, I invite you to take a deep breath, and let's gather for worship.
this be our song? No one stands alone, standing side by side. Draw the circle. the still point of the circle round whom all creation turns nothing lost but held forever in God's gracious sight draw the circle wide draw it wider still let this be our song no one stands Standing side by side, draw the circle wide. Let our hearts touch far horizons, so encompass great and small. Let our love be known, no borders, faithful to God's call. Let this be our song, no one stands alone, standing side by side, draw the circle. Hi, this is Pastor Steve Potit Marshall, again welcoming you to worship. Uh, today is Holy Communion Sunday, so that I would invite you to get some bread and some juice to share in that ritual with us, and we appreciate you doing that. Uh, this is the fifth Sunday of Easter, and this is a Sunday where we'll celebrate Holy Communion, we'll hear the scriptures, and I invite you to listen to how we might see the transformation from exclusion to inclusion in our lives. The sermon will focus on how to be open to the Spirit and opening our hearts to include those who might be excluded. You can register your attendance on our worship hub if you go there, and you can uh, fill in the, a prayer request and also give online. And just uh, as we gather, there's a couple of announcements. Uh, we will be studying a, a book uh, called Forgiveness, The Passionate Forgiveness Journey. And you're invited to come and participate in that in-person study. Just contact the office and we'll get you all the details. Also, we want you to know that uh, on May 23rd, which is going to be Pentecost Sunday, we're planning to come back in person into the sanctuary. So back indoors. Well, there'll still be a few restrictions, but for the most part, we'll be welcome back in that time. So we invite you to think about and make plans to be with us in worship on that day. As we gather for worship today, I want you to invite you to start with a gesture of holding out your hands. Today, we'll explore being held by the Spirit Open yourself to be held by God. Open yourself to reach out in love. Open your heart and your mind and your arms to receive today's ancient story, to feel it and taste it and to see it, and allow your whole self to be welcome here and to be present in this moment. So as we are, 
I invite you to come on in as we begin worship. the church. Jesus said, if you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish and it will be done for you. Let us now approach him with confidence as we pray. Risen Lord, you came as a sacrifice for our sin. Give us faith to accept this act of love so that we turn from all human efforts and drink in the atoning righteousness of your death and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Risen Lord, you are the true vine and we are the branches. By your spirit, produce the fruit of love, joy, peace, and patience in us for others to taste and enjoy. Keep us from hanging on to love for ourselves. Prune all selfishness from us and fill us with your love. Lord, in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Risen Lord, have mercy on your earth and supply its needs. Where people are hungry, give food. Where people are in distress, comfort them. Where people are in trouble, bring order and peace. And turn the whole world to you in faith, repentance and praise. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus Christ, focus our love on people we know with special needs. Heal those who are unwell and others in need whom we now name silently in our hearts. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for hearing us and caring for us in all our needs. Constantly intercede for us before our Heavenly Father and open our eyes that we may see him through you. We ask all this in your holy name, for you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever, and pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
I'm Bob Danielson. The theme for the day for Sunday, May 2nd, is the story of Philip and the eunuch, in some ways an outsider, expresses the exclusive love of God for all. All are invited to come home to God because love is simply part of our nature, and love is God. The invitation to the table this day is as simple as it is every time we make it, when you endeavor to love your neighbor and live in peace with each other, there is always room for you, no matter whether you are fit or not, no matter whether you've been coming to church for a long time or not in a long time. Welcome home. I'm Linda Smith, and I'm reading the scripture for today, Acts 8, verses 26 through 40. Then an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Get up and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza, which was a wilderness road. So he got up and went. Now there was an Ethiopian eunuch, a court official of the Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, in charge of her entire treasury. He had come to Jerusalem to worship. And when he was returning home, seated in his chariot, he was reading the prophet Isaiah. Then the spirit said to Philip, go over to this chariot and join in. So Philip ran up to it and heard him reading the prophet Isaiah. He asked, do you understand what you're reading? He replied, how can I, unless someone guides me? And he invited Philip to get in and sit beside him. Now the passage of the scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep, he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb, silent before its shearer, so he does not open his mouth. In his humiliation, justice was denied him. Who can, who can describe his generation? For his life is taken away from the earth. The eunuch asked Philip, about whom, may I ask you, does the prophet say this, about himself or about someone else? And then Philip began to speak, and starting with, his script, with this scripture, he proclaimed to him the good news about Jesus. As they were going along the road, they came to some water, and the eunuch said, Look, here is water. What is to prevent me from being baptized? He commanded the chariot to stop, and both of them, Philip and the eunuch, went down into the water, and Philip baptized him. When they came up out of the water, the Spirit of the Lord snatched Philip away. The eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus, and as he was passing through the region, he proclaimed the good news to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. Our second scripture reading today is from the book of John, chapter 15 verses one through eight. I am the true vine, and my Father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear more fruit. You have already been cleansed by the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit, because apart from me you can do nothing. Whoever does not abide in me is thrown away like a branch and withers. Such branches are gathered, thrown into the fire, and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask for whatever you wish, and it will be done for you. My Father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. Here in this church we are. 
this past week, we had the trees on our property trimmed. And I learned as I talked with our tree trimmers more about trees and their root systems. The 400 and 600 year old oaks that sit right outside my office window are there still and have survived all these years because they have deep roots, roots that go down and intermingle with one another and they support one another through the winds and the storms and the earthquakes and all that have, and the fires that have happened through these years. This reminds me of the passage we read together from John. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. As I thought about those majestic oats, oaks and how many years they have lived, I was, I was reminded of what I need for me to thrive and to grow. This passage reminds me that I need to be vied in Christ and root myself in the relationship to the divine source that keeps me close. I think I'm thinking of Doris Ray, who one of our church members who I've only known really for a brief time compared to some of you in our congregation. And she is a member of our church who's been active in our choir and taught classes. And in so many ways, her life has been active because of her faith. And she, was, uh, she is not afraid in these last days of her life to pass from this life into the next. In fact, she said last week when I uh, visited her, I'm looking forward to it. To have this kind of faith, one that abides in Christ and Christ abiding in us is a true gift and a blessing. Now, Philip experiences this gift and, in fact, gets a very specific calling. Get up and go towards the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. So we went. God promises to abide in us and guide us. But it's up, up to us to follow that call where the Spirit leads us, even if we don't understand the end result or clear path ahead. And so for Philip, he went. And the spirit was not done. Go over to the chariot and join it. So Philip does and encounters an Ethiopian eunuch, one who's studying Isaiah. It's important to the story to have these two descriptions of this person, Ethiopia and eunuch. Ethiopia, Ethiopia was a faraway place from Jerusalem. And a culture and the practices of Ethiopians were strange and maybe exotics, perhaps to anyone who grew up into the, in the Middle East. And eunuchs, they were a strange and usually excluded class of people who, do, who did not really associate with people on the outside of that inner circle. They were often stigmatized or humiliated or cast off from other societies unfamiliar with their lifestyle. Yet Philip is called to approach and engage with him. And what comes to pass is an encounter that results in the eunuch being baptized. So what is the Bible teaching us? First, this is a story about a person whose royal job in a worldly court could have, that we get that impression from the Bible, that, but also the impression that he was unwelcomed in God's court. And this may come from the law in Deuteronomy that says, make it plain that no one who is sexually mutilated, mutilated shall be admitted to the assembly of God. But the, in Isaiah, the prophet announces that God will recover the remnant that is left of his people from Ethiopia he also promises that eunuchs that keep my Sabbath will be welcomed in the house of God and will receive a name better than sons and daughters. It's chapter 56, verses 4 through 5. Scripture is sometimes confusing and it takes study to discern what God is up to. So Philip is there to 
help the Ethiopian understand that God abides in him and proclaims the good news of Jesus, who is concerned about those who are often cast out. This leads this royal subject to see that he was too invited and he was loved and he was included. The good news was for him. And so he wants to be baptized. In this moment, the wall that separated him from the fellowship, the prejudice and prohibition in the past was knocked down by the breath of God's spirit through the person of Philip. This story reminds me that we are, of, we are all instruments of God's good news and we are called to follow the Holy Spirit to break down the walls that separate us and to separate us from one another in the world. And why heal our divides or why even try to heal our divides in this time where it seems like we're all so divided by political stances and all kinds of things in the world. Well, in a recent post, theologian Diana Butler Bass reflects on this question and writes, because it matters why, why we heal our divides. For our communities and our neighbors, of course, but it also matters for our own lives. In 1892, William James wrote, all our life so far as it has definite form is but a mass of habits. A large body of research since then has confirmed how our lives are composed of routine practices and the habits we develop over years. One recent study found that 40% of the participants' daily actions did not come from an intentional choice, but things they did out of habit. So America is a culture that aspires to unity, a plurius unum, but has habituated division. Blame it on the Republicans or Democrats or whoever. Truth is we have a national habit of finger pointing, blaming others, assigning people to categories, and pressing advantage for our own side. We've a divided national soul, and that line of division runs right through each of our own hearts. Even when we want to go beyond division, and many of us, including myself, secretly think, I don't want to be with those people. They are beyond the pale. You can't make peace with them. So I think Diane and her, her confession reminds us that the good news that Philip teaches is about a God who searches for the forgotten and humiliated, who searches for the lonely and the outcasts, who searches for those who are lost. And we, like Philip, are called to go and find them, abide with them, and we will see that as we heal divides, our world becomes that much closer to peace and well-being for all people. We are all branches of the same tree, the same vine. We are all part of Jesus who abides in us, and we need to find ways of healing those divines. Doris Ray is a person who acted in small ways, perhaps, teaching Bible study at the Christian home to people from all walks of life, praying with people so that they could understand that the good news was meant for their lives. So as we go about living our week, pay attention to the Spirit and go wherever God may lead to bring good news of Jesus' love that includes all. Create new habits that will lead to breaking down the walls that divide us and encourages others to do the same. Amen. Welcome to the Holy Communion service. Uh, if you don't have your cup and your bread, please get that ready for our time together. I'm going to be using this uh, because this is what we're using for in-person worship communion, and that way you'll see what, how we're doing it. So when you come in person, you'll be ready to go. So let us pray. Jesus said, I am the vine, you are the branches. We thank you, O gracious God, for Jesus Christ, the true vine, with his roots eternally grounded in you. 
We rejoice by the grace that we have been grafted into him to be the branches on the vine which bears the loveliness of all fruits of the earth. Yet we confess that not all is well with the way we live. Please forgive us for the occasions when we've been the ones to introduce disease into the vine, preferring its contamination to the vigor of health. Forgive us for neglecting to draw deeply on the sap of life, for our tendency to wander instead of growing on the framework you provide, of being content and sometimes even proud of a few sparse or undersized fruits for the apathy which lets us go through some seasons without bearing any fruit. Have mercy on us. Please do not lose patience or severe us completely from the true vine. Rather, heal our diseases. Discipline and train our wandering tendrils. Prune out our unfruitful branches and cut away our diseased ones. May we remain in Christ and he in us through all the changing seasons of life. Let us delight in bearing the fruits of love, which are, is our true purpose and joy. For your name's sake, amen. Jesus said, if you reside in me and my words reside in you, ask whatever you will and it shall be done for you. Friends, we have, been asked, we have asked for forgiveness and correction. It has been done truly to us. It has been done for us and it will be done for us in the future. Thanks be to God. Amen. And may the peace of Christ be with you and also with you. We are all invited to come to this feast where there is enough. Enough room around the table, enough grace for all. No matter what your journey has been, indeed, where you are enough. You only need to be hungry. That's it. Hungry for love, for justice, for change, for reconciliation, for whatever your heart yearns for. You can just be hungry for food or bread of life or just bread. God knows that what you need. Come and receive it and by this be inspired to offer it to the world. Let this sharing with each other form us to go and do likewise outside of this place. Jesus is with us as we lift up our hearts to God and let us give thanks for the bounty of this life. It is good to cry out for the waters of justice to roll down, bringing heaven on earth, watering it with God's will for love soaked humanity once creation began. For God continues to stand with and for all peoples. And so we swing with, sing with all the company of heaven, O holy God, Lord of hosts, we sing your praise over all the earth. Blessed are the ones who come here and now and sing Hosanna and proclaim new birth. New birth for creation broke forth upon us in Jesus. Your spirit anointed him to preach the good news to the poor, to proclaim release to the captives and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who were oppressed, and to announce that the time had come when you would save your people. He healed the sick, fed the hungry, and ate with sinners. In these acts of love and justice, we see the birth of our call as a church, to let the waters of justice roll, knowing that we've been delivered from death through the covenant of water and the spirit. In this moment, we remember all who suffer in our day and imagine how Jesus would respond to them. So in the moment of silence, I invite you to call to mind and heart, remembering to God the people and places known and unknown that need our prayers, that so desperately need a place at our table of love. Just as he said it that last night with his disciples, Jesus says to us, come gather around my friends. The common bread at the, our table is much more than it seems. This is the brokenness of the world and I feel it as my body. Whenever there is suffering, I suffer with you. I am broken for you. This common cup at our table is much more than it seems. The blood of innocent ones is too often shed at the hands of oppressors. Wherever there is suffering, I suffer with you, I'm poured out for you. We proclaim this truth, death is part of life. Christ has died, but death will not have the last word. Christ has risen and suffering will end. Christ will come again 
and again and again. And every time suffering is alleviated, comfort is given, food is offered, hope is restored. Pour out your Holy Spirit on this body gathered here and on our, and everywhere, and on our union with each other and with these gifts of bread of cup. May we become your body for the sake of the world, where justice rolls down like an ever-flowing stream. And now we'll join in taking the communion. First take your bread or cracker, the body of Christ given for you. Then likewise take the cup. the blood of Christ given for you. We give thanks for the way in which our offerings will become our work in the world. For this gift of community bound and working together, we give thanks. Amen. Hi, I'm Janie. And I'm reading the invitation for you this morning. The United Methodist Church's special giving structure ensures your generosity blesses as many people as possible in sustainable strategic ways. Through the support of you and your church, we fund hundreds of projects each year in Atascadero and throughout the whole world. As United Methodists, we take seriously the scripture that teaches, bear one another's burdens and in this way, you will fulfill the law of Christ. Jesus says it this way, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Thank you for your generosity. Welcome to the mission moment. So today's mission moment is on uh, from Reverend Grace S. Pock, and I'm reading uh, this for you today. And let's start with this scripture. Dear friends, let's love each other because love is from God and everyone who loves is born from God and knows God. That's from 1 John 4, 7. Reverend Park says, I came to the United States at age 12, over 40 years ago. As I grew up in New York City in the 1970s, there was always a nagging question. Where do I fit in as a Korean? Do I belong here? Fast forward 20 years, I was ordained and appointed to serve a Caucasian congregation in rural New Jersey. As soon as I arrived at my new pastorate, a lifelong member of the congregation stopped coming to the church. I reached out, but received no response. This is my story, but also a story of many Asian Americans living in the United States. This question of belonging is not just for the first generation immigrants, but also for those whose roots in the U.S. goes back generations. In American Methodism, the presence and contribution of Asian Americans began as early as 1898. The first Methodist services began in the Philippines when it became an American colony after Spain ceded the Philippines to the United States by signing the Treaty of Paris on December 10, 1898. In 1904, the first Korean Methodist Church was established in Hawaii by Korean Methodists who were imported to work in the sugarcane plantations. Asian Pacific Her American Heritage Month is the month of May, and it affords an opportunity to recognize and celebrate the great contributions made by our Asian and Pacific American sisters and brothers. This is also an occasion for Asian and Pacific Americans to claim their heritage and stand tall, knowing that we belong here. So I appreciate Reverend Pak's message, and I hope that we will support our Asian Pacific Islander uh, friends and colleagues and pastors and congregations, for they are part of our CalPAC annual conference. Loving God, you call us to love all of your children, not just the ones who look, act, and talk like we do. Open our hearts, minds, and doors to accept others. In your name we pray. Amen. Go now and love one another, because love is from God. 
Proclaim God's salvation to every generation. Remain in Jesus Christ and like branches of a vine, draw your life from him. And may God, the vine grower, tend you and make you fruitful. May Jesus Christ abide in you and give you life. And may the Holy Spirit cast out all fear and fill you with God's love. We go in peace to serve and love the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen. I want to invite you to our fellowship time, which is a link that you'll see right there in our online worship service. And what we're going to try this week is to have a couple iPads out here on the patio so people can Zoom and say hi to you on Zoom. So please uh, check in and they'll be waving to you as they uh, start to leave to go home, but at least you get to see them. So anyways, grab your coffee and a goodie perhaps and come on in over for fellowship time. 